Hi, I'm Irving. You have just entered Cartertopia. <laughs> I've seen that. The Capitol Dome is beautiful at night. But I definitely wasn't that high when I saw it. We're at a disco and the host is familiar. That's the wrong music. Let me fix it for you. We'll spend most of the cold open cutting to this couple and then to John Travolta's goofier twin. The question is why? We'll fill some more time with more dancing and a few words from Wolfman, I mean, Infrared. That's worse than the time Johnny Fever renamed himself Rip Tide. Anyway, stuff finally starts happening. You're becoming quite regular here, I see. <laughs> it's only my second time in, Angelique. Oh, she's the manager of the club. We'll learn more about Angelique as we go along. Right now, that guy has other things on his mind. Uh, Angelique keeps a few rooms in the back for the entertainment of her more uh, special customers. You interested? I don't understand. I know in the 70s some people like to put a mirror on their bedroom ceiling, but this is a little bit of overkill. Just relax, man. I want to talk to you about your work. Let me take some of that load off your mind, darling. All those secrets that are making you so uptight. Meanwhile, at a military base somewhere near somewhere else, there's a problem. The morning sun isn't shining like a red rubber ball. We've taken every precaution, Miss Prince. Base has been evacuated. We do have nuclear shielding. But your fail-safe engineer is the only one who can deactivate the bomb? It's an experimental model. Borden is the only person within 100 miles that can handle it. Oh, and there's a nuclear bomb about to detonate. Yeah, it's a prototype model. Designed to shoot a stream of supercharged ions directly into the bomb chamber. Eventually, we hope to use it for remote triggering of nuclear missiles at a range of, uh, oh, 50 miles or more. Lovely. Death by long distance. Isn't death by long distance kind of what nuclear missiles already do? The engineer comes tearing up to the bomb with two minutes to go. He hooks up a control box and all he has to do is input the failsafe code. Well, take it easy. The sequence has to be right. 24, uh, 32? No! 33. Uh. There's just one problem. He can't remember what it is. The bomb is about to go off, so they all head for the shielded bunker. They don't notice that Diana isn't with them. She realized her dog will chase both a ball and a stick, so she combined the two. That was the detonator charge, the thing that's supposed to shoot the ions and set off the nuclear part. It didn't do that, so everybody's safe. While Borden is throwing out numbers trying to remember the code, someone else knows it well. 63, 89, 22, 7. Go on, Nick. The buyer for this tape is waiting. She is the bad guy. Clearly, I should have shown that part like this. 63... 89, 22, 7. Go on, Nick. The buyer for this tape is waiting. Ionic field density varies with the relative distance between the bomb chamber and the detonator, becoming ineffectual at a distance of 1.2 kilometers. They said they hoped to reach up to 50 miles. They're at 1.2 kilometers. Only about 49 and a half miles to go. We're going to learn that Nick is a genuine, honest-to-goodness telepath. Scientists have found less than a handful of people like him, and nobody knows why he exists. 
We know the Vorlons didn't have anything to do with it, but some genetic quirk gave him this, and she's using him to get rich. Angelique has another guy coming in this evening who designs military satellites, and Nick is to probe his mind for information she can sell. Nick says, okay, I'll do it, but then I get the rest of the night off, and I get tomorrow night off. I see potential for all of this to become a problem. It's as though someone just lifted the memories right out of his mind. Yeah, but it's possible. You mean telepathy, something like that? We can't really discount it, Diana. Ira's been collecting data on paranormal research. Considering the stuff Diana has seen and done as an Amazon, telepathy shouldn't be much of a stretch. Maybe she's jealous because she has to use a lasso to find out what's in somebody's mind. Elsewhere, Angelique is reaming Nick. So, my little disco devil, it would seem that somebody had botched his job, wouldn't it? I got the information, didn't I? That's very true. And that's all you were supposed to steal from his mind. The information. You weren't supposed to wipe out 24 hours. Nick is blowing it off, but Angelique is nervous because now the IADC is involved. One of their agents, Diana Prince, brought Borden to the hospital. So what? They're not going to get anything out of him. All the evidence is in my head. You worry too much, Angie. He just crossed the line, and he knows it. Don't you ever call me that name again. Pardon me, Angelique. I want you to follow the Prince woman. Find out what she knows. Diana has been getting a crash course in the paranormal from Ira. He has some photos for her to check out. Of the four memory telepaths discovered in tests at the Virginia Institute for Paranormal Research, only two, 3A, 7F, Possessed psychic powers capable of leaving an amnesiac void like the one you described. Nicholas Carbone and Del Franklin. We know Nick is our boy, but Diana won't be looking for him because he was supposed to have been killed in a gang war two years ago. The other dude isn't likely to be her man, and Ira explains why. It is doubtful that someone who steals classified data would have been employed as a fry cook, a taxi driver, a sales clerk, and a sanitary engineer for the Arlington Public Zoo all in the last year alone. Right now, he works for a trucking company, so let's go find him before he changes jobs again. Diana speaks to his foreman, and Dell parks his truck to go talk to this stranger. Franklin, you're trapped! That just got him fired, so he has plenty of time to talk to the IADC lady. I don't know. They say that I can't uh, focus on my work, you know, that I can't... I don't focus on my energy, whatever that means, you know. If they knew what my real problem was, they'd uh, freak. Your psychic abilities? You know. He keeps reading people's minds and finding out they all make more than he does. Well, I guess you think like everybody else does at the Institute that I'm this uh, lucky guy, right? Well, you gotta think again. I mean, how can I live with my conscience knowing that I can just steal bits and pieces of people's lives? That too. For him, it's a curse. He'd rather not have it at all. He gives Diana a demonstration. He says, think of someone you know. Her mind automatically goes to Steve. Who'd you think of? I can't remember. Well, I can. His name is Steve Trevor. He's your boss at the IADC. He's tall, he has dark hair, he's built like a football player, and he has his office next to yours, and I hate him already. He says, what right do I have to do that? Diana says, I'd like to offer you a job. Be at IADC headquarters tomorrow morning. They shake hands, and he gets a flash of her as Wonder Woman dealing with the bomb. He doesn't understand it, so he lets it go. Lucky for Diana. The guy's a real klutz. I can't figure out what she'd want with a guy like that. His name is Franklin, Del Franklin. Nick knows that name. He says Dell's talent is the same as his, but not as strong, not as developed. Angelique says, can you handle him if we get him here tonight? Nick says, of course. Angelique also tells her man, Lance, it's time to eliminate Diana Prince. Uh, excuse me, sir, could you give me a hand? Uh, it made this terrible gasping noise when it died. Um, could you just take a look? I don't know, you know, I don't really know much about all that. Oh, please, just one look. Uh, just try. Okay. She has him touch something under the hood and the car starts. He's a hero. Are you busy tonight? No. I 
work at a place called The Sticks. It's a very exclusive disco. You might have heard of it. I'd love for you to come and be my guest, and then maybe later on we could go for a drink or something. The or something got his attention. Kathy there really knows how to use her assets. <laughs> You know, just go where your feet take you. Just... Is she wearing a teddy? Then I know where my feet are taking me as quick as she gives the word. Dell feels like a goldfish at a pie-eating contest. He's ready to leave. There are uh, a few quiet rooms up in the back. Maybe you and I could go up and... Uh, you got better things to do than to listen to me, right? What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to leave now. Look, thanks for inviting me, and you're really a very nice girl, and... Uh... But I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, no fun, right? But wait, what? Kathy doesn't handle rejection well. He walked out on me. I can't believe it. He walked out on me. Well, he's got taste. I'll give him that. It took seven guys to pull Kathy off Angelique, and at that, they were too late. Nick took over Angelique's organization and ran it into the ground because he had no idea what the organization actually did. Get him back. Preferably in one piece. For her part, Diana has gone home. Good evening, Miss Prince. For a moment. Oh, Dell, what are you doing? If he had been one second later, those images he saw would have made a lot more sense. Well, I mean, some clown tried to force me off the road, and then he ran into a fire hydrant, so I just hightailed it over here. I mean, I didn't know where else to go. Oh, uh, well, uh, I've run into a small problem of my own. <laughs> They split up. What's his face takes Dell to Lance's car while Lance takes Diana back to her apartment. You're gonna kill me without even telling me why? It's not very fair. Few things in life are. Good thing it was a war movie and not Captain Kangaroo. My associate will be here in a minute. You don't mind waiting, do you? Question is to you. <laughs> Dell jumps out and goon number one maneuvers to pick up Lance and get out of there. Wonder Woman assures Dell that Diana is fine, then the IADC takes him to one of their safe houses for the night. Since the bad guys found out about him through Diana, she doesn't know where. I send you out to get one woman and one dummy. And you come back with your tails between your legs. What? The IADC has this Franklin person in protective custody by now. Any ideas how we're going to get him out? I've got one. We start doing things my way. We won't find out what that is for a while, because at the moment, Dell is probing our engineer's mind to see if he can sort out what happened and maybe get some of the knowledge back. Diana tracks down information about the sticks the club warden went to, and Angelique, the owner. But all they have so far is a psychic's word, and that's not enough to get a warrant and let the police storm the place. So Diana's not sure what to do. Nick, on the other hand, has the whole day planned out. Good morning. I'd like to see Diana Prince, please. I'm sorry she's not in. May I take a message? No, it's fairly important. Who's her immediate supervisor? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't give you that information. But he'll get it, and she won't even remember him being there. He makes his way to Steve's office. At least you'll be safe here. Got two men in the lobby 24 hours a day. He wipes Steve's memory and leaves. Now, if you've read False Memory by Dean Koontz, you might know where I'm going to go with this. In that story, a guy was using mind control on several people, but he made a mistake. He triggered a guy who was sitting down and had just put aside a book he was reading. Before he released the guy, he put the book in his lap. The guy's perception was one instant he had put the book down and the next it was back in his hand. That was the little rock that started the landslide that brought the bad guy down. Nick is making the same mistake. Steve was sitting down when he came in. If he suddenly finds himself standing, he's going to wonder who was messing with his mind. I may give him too much credit. I got him stashed at some sleazy little place downtown. 
Now, you go up and get Franklin, and I'll take care of the two agents in the lobby. Why don't you get Franklin, and I take care of the guys in the lobby? Well, maybe you don't want to meet this uh, Franklin guy for some reason. Nick won't give him a straight answer. He just calls him stupid and says, drive. Lance knows he hit a nerve. The question, as always, is why? Why is he afraid to meet Dell face to face? It would make more sense for Lance to deal with the two agents. He's Angelique's hitman. But we'll do it Nick's way for now. Hi, I'm back. Wait till you hear what the Attorney General's office said. About what? About Dell. Dell who? What do you mean, Dell who? Dell Franklin, the guy you've got under lock and key somewhere? Diana, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's going to take Diana way longer than it should to figure out what's going on. By the time she brings Steve up to speed, it's too late. Dell is gone. Good afternoon, Mr. Franklin. Welcome back. Where's Nick? He isn't here. He took care of the IADC agents and then split. And he told me he'd be here. How odd. Almost as if he didn't want to face Mr. Franklin. Dell still doesn't know who she is or why she brought him here. To everyone's surprise, Nick appears. Same old Franklin, huh? Still working those grubby little jobs and still messing up. You know, uh, I always knew that you'd end up in a place like this. Because you never cared what you took or who you hurt. Nick says, I want him killed right now. No talk, no waiting, no prep. Just take him out immediately. Everyone wants to know why, because Nick is acting like he's afraid of Dell. What's the hurry? Maybe he can be of some use to us. What do you need with him when you got me? He's nothing. He's a klutz. That justifies murdering him? Methinks the dude doth protest too much. What are you afraid of? Someone's going to take away this empty little kingdom of yours? You want him dead so bad? Do the job yourself. I leave the menial labor to you, Lance. He really is afraid of Dell. He knows something about Dell that nobody else in the room does, and he's not telling what it is. But it sure has him running scared. He's a typical insecure American guy, so he has to cover it all with big talk and bluster. And that's not all. I'll be back tonight, and I expect him to be disposed of. Just a minute, Marino. Since when do you give the orders around here? Since now, lady. And you'd better get used to it. Angelique may be the only person involved who didn't see that coming eventually. Nick is A, way too full of himself, and B, way too into the creature comforts of life to stay on someone else's payroll for very long. And now he's taking over, and if someone tries to block him, he'll just steal all their memories and turn them into a drooling vegetable. Only one thing to do. I want Nick eliminated today. Every minute that he lives, we're in danger. Take Mr. Franklin downstairs, give him suitable accommodations, treat him like one of the family, which is what he's going to be. And if Nick doesn't see that coming, he's as clueless as anybody else in the story. He's no longer the only game in town. We have a potential replacement, which makes him expendable. I just have one suggestion. Get yourself a good sniper rifle and do it from a long distance where he can't see it coming and do anything about it. Hello, Lance boy. I told him to do it from a distance. Then again, Lance isn't too bright. The instant he made that noise, he should have slipped back out the window and closed it so Nick would think he was just hearing things. Nick pretty well wipes him clean and leaves him an empty shell. Elsewhere, Diana's going dancing. <laughs> This is why I never got into that kind of dancing. I'm afraid I look like that. She spots a waiter taking a single meal upstairs and surmises that's probably where Dell is. And indeed he is. Just take the past two or three minutes, just enough for you to get away. You don't have to do a nick on him, but Dell can't even bring himself to do that. He's just too nice. <music> Mr. 
Mr. Flash Flail there seems to have forgotten he was dancing with somebody so she can escape unnoticed. She goes upstairs and starts checking doors. That's the wrong one. And I'm not sure why a trained IADC agent would casually let the door close behind her like that, especially after she saw what's in the room. She does the only thing she can do, change to Wonder Woman. And hope there aren't any security cameras in there because she didn't check. She thought about just kicking it in, but that might bring the whole place down. And she didn't want to count how many years of bad luck she'd get for breaking all those mirrors. Nick has Angelique trapped on the dance floor and he's making all kinds of interesting threats. Maybe I'll just wipe out a year of your life. Leave you stranded in time. I'm tired, Nick. I want... Well, maybe I'll take you back to a quieter time. Adolescence, infancy, childhood. We'll make a nice, calm, quiet little two-year-old girl out of you, Angie. Too bad she didn't think to carry some mace or maybe a knife because one of those might give her a chance to get away. She put all her faith in Lance. Dumb move. Wonder Woman has finished cutting a section of the mirror away from the door. It's handy that her bracelet cut clear through the door, too. Dell! Wonder Woman! We've got to stop meeting like this. Come on. Nick is still taunting Angelique because that's what guys like him do. They abuse and humiliate women. It makes them feel like big, rough, tough cowboys. <laughs> I'll take care of you. Dell certainly seems to have found his voice, but Nick is a special case that doesn't necessarily violate his ethics. You going somewhere, Nick? Just stay away from me, you little creep. I scare you, don't I? Is what they said at the Institute. I'll get lost, man. That if we ever use our power over each other, it would cancel each other out. And you're scared I can take away the one thing that makes you the big man. Nick, typical tiny ego guy that he is, starts begging Dell to leave him alone. He makes all kinds of promises and Dell says, I've been a freak all my life and this is my chance to become a normal human. I'm not about to blow this. I've waited too long for it. Angelique and her minions are trying to figure out how to get rid of Wonder Woman without starting a panic. She's making her way around the dance floor, keeping an eye on them and looking for Dell and Nick. Hey, baby, you're good. You want a boogie? Not right now. Hey, I don't get into negative emotions. Hey, I don't recognize the word no. Well, uh, maybe it's time you started. If a guy tells you he doesn't recognize the word no, call the police. Sooner or later, he'll be a potential rapist. Leaving so soon? Here now. If you stay, someone will be by in a moment to take your order. I enjoy the creative ways we come up with for her to restrain the villains. <laughs> Say it isn't so, Wolfman. Oh, right, he's infrared, so it doesn't matter if he's with the bad guys. How do you have a 21 second segment with Wolfman Jack and not have him say anything? His voice was his whole bit. And you have him standing there like a, like a, like a stuffed werewolf. I see we haven't gotten any better about blowing opportunities. Let's check on Dell. I think for the first time in my life, I'm fine. So is he, except I just don't think he realizes it yet. <laughs> well, I think someone probably better... Hey, baby! I've been just clapping for years, and I ain't never seen anybody like you. Anyways, I got this great little place over in uh, Woodburn, you know? It's got this nice two-story balcony you can throw me off of. That sounds awesome. How about it? It appears the effects of your psychic powers are only temporary. It seems that Borden and the others are slowly regaining the memories that were taken from them. I assume he includes himself in that. Dell says, now that I don't have my powers anymore, I'm realizing that whole thing was just an excuse for my failures. What do you mean? Well, I never really liked myself much before, you know what I mean? But 
When there I was trying to get away from Norman, and I had to choose between being like Nick, I mean, just for that moment, or being me, I chose me. And now that he's rid of his curse, whatever secret he saw in Diana's mind is safe. Nick is having a hard time adjusting to being normal, but he'll have plenty of time to deal with it in prison. We don't know what he did to Lance, and apparently nobody cares. The damage to national security can be dealt with, and all is well. Except for one thing. I wonder if either Nick or Dell could pull out one more trick to take care of Disco Dingbat here. I'm Irving, and you are now exiting Cartertopia. Clap for the Wolfman.